Hello and welcome to another standard video here in the brand new Foundations meta game. Today we're trying out this red black graveyard deck, but unlike a typical reanimator deck that's looking to bring back expensive creatures out of the graveyard, our primary game plan revolves around Urborg Scavengers, which has been in standard for a while through Aftermath, but just hasn't seen any significant play. But now with Foundations we've got a lot of creatures that have lots of powerful keywords that the Scavengers is looking to inherit. So a 3 mana 2-2 two two, when it enters or attacks, we can exile any card from any graveyard and put a plus one plus one counter on the scavengers, and then it has all evergreen keywords, if you will, of all cards exiled with the ability. So that includes flying, as well as first strike, double strike, death touch, haste, hexproof, indestructible, a lifelink, menace, reach, trample, and vigilance. And eventually this deck can give all of those keywords to the scavengers. So that's the plan, and especially with keywords like indestructible, it's going to be very difficult for a lot of decks to answer the scavengers and then once we get double strike and lifelink going it can also outrace a lot of the aggro decks in the format and one of the most exciting additions for the deck in foundations is Zetalpa Primal Dawn reprinted in standard since this 4-8 has flying double strike vigilance trample and indestructible so mainly indestructible and double strike are some of the more exciting keywords but also vigilance allows our scavengers to play offense and defense and then flying and trample also don't hurt so this is the perfect card to maybe discard on turn two already to set up a turn three indestructible scavengers which the opponent will have a hard time answering and then we also have some additional one-off creatures that we can maybe put in the graveyard sire of seven deaths another new addition from foundations a seven seven with first strike vigilance menace trample reach lifelink and ward making the opponent pay seven life the only ability we're not gonna give to the scavengers is a ward so that one doesn't apply but everything else does and then we've got Atraxa, Flying Vigilance, Death Touch, and Lifelink, and also potentially good to reanimate, as we'll get to draw a lot of extra cards. Then we've got Droxkull Reaver, also reprinted in Standard, has Flying, Double Strike, and Lifelink, and if we were to just reanimate it the classic way, also draws a card whenever we gain life. And finally, Sphinx of the Final Word can grant Flying and Hexproof to the Scavengers, which is especially important if we expect the opponent to have ways to bounce the Scavengers, or exile it with Spot Removal, where uh, Indestructible is not going to help out and then a sphinx a 5-5 that cannot be countered making other instant and sorcery spells uncounterable as well which can be relevant if we cast a zombify reanimating those creatures so that's our backup plan in case a scavenger's plan doesn't work out two copies of zombify which at four mana can already reanimate some of those creatures and then we've got other ways to specifically put cards in the graveyard to enable the scavengers with a full set of Vile and Tumor. Was uh, originally in a Modern Horizons set, now available in Standard as well. A 2-2 with Death Touch. When it enters, we can search our library for any specific card and put it into our graveyard. So that will often get as a Talpa if we don't have one already. But sometimes we're just looking for Lifelink. And then sometimes against Aggro, we specifically want a Lifelink and Double Strike as soon as possible so we can get the Reaver, so we can kind of pick and choose and occasionally we might actually use the Entomber to put Scavengers in the graveyard in the first place because we also have access to four copies of a Lively Dirge which has a lot of different modes thanks to Spree. So for three mana it's just basically the Vile Entomber's ability, search any card, put it in the graveyard and then for four mana we can return up to two creature cards with total mana value four or less from our graveyard to the battlefield. So that's a way to maybe reanimate a Scavengers or maybe a Vile Entomber from our graveyard. So if we're stuck on four mana we can use the Entomber to get Scavengers and then use a Lively Dirge to get the Scavengers back and get it going. But ideally we can cast Dirge for 5 mana, in which case we can do both modes, including maybe putting a Scavengers in the graveyard and then immediately bringing it back so it can get the party started. But if we already have a Scavengers in play, then Dirge can also help put additional keywords in the graveyard for us. And then rounding out the deck, we've got a bit of removal with four copies of Cutdown and the full set of Bitter Triumph, which also has the added utility of discarding cards from our hand, so we can set up the Scavengers. And then we've got the full set of Bitter Reunion, which helps us discard and draw two, so it can also fill the graveyard for us, and can also be sacrificed for one mana to give our team haste, so that can be a nice way to give Scavengers haste, so it can attack and maybe exile two creatures in one turn, which can be very helpful. And then uh, two copies of Sazakab's Brew, which is another way of discarding and drawing two, but can also maybe gift the opponent a fish to give our creature two extra power, so that can also be helpful, especially in combination with Double Strike, to get the game over with. 
And then our mana base has some utility lanes, theater entering tapped but letting us surveil one is quite helpful in a graveyard deck. And then we've got two copies of Arrestless Events, which can also maybe help us discard and draw to set up our graveyard. And then Blazemire Verge and Blackleaf Cliffs, so the mana base is painless without any pain lines in it. And then a two mountains, eight swamps. So yeah, that's our deck. Now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the play. We have a lively dirge, which can eventually get scavengers if we cast it for five mana. So that will require some setup. In the meantime, just a cut down, no discard outlet. I think we mulligan. This hand's not great either. But I'm willing to give it a shot with double theater. There's a chance I surveil something that we can then zombify back. And I've got a little bit of removal in the meantime. Another cut down can go. And Tumor, so let's play Taplan, Scavengers. I feel like I have to keep. Next turn I'll have to just cast Brew to try and hit Land Drop. And Bat we can cut down. They still get to have a look. And then what to discard to the brew. If the scavenger's plan doesn't work out, it could be nice to have Zombify as a backup plan. But it is kind of the least important right now. Or we can ditch Bitter Triumph. Although it is the only interaction we have left. So I'll get rid of Zombify. Gotta believe in the scavengers. And then we might want to play in Tumor for Hexproof. Or we can go for Zatalpa and hope they can't exile the scavengers. Opponent's got another bait. Might just go for Bitter Triumph, which is fine. Yeah, unless their opponent is playing the uh, Affliction at two mana, which exiles the scavengers, I don't think we need Hexproof, and Indestructible is good enough. So we'll get Zatalpa. Now our opponent can also respond to the scavengers trigger if they keep up instant speed removal. So we'll see if that's the case. Because that would make things a lot trickier and could have been a reason to hang on to Zombify as a backup plan. But as we see, Bitter Triumph also had its uses. So yeah, best case scenario, our opponent taps out. Archfiend, perfect. So I get to play Scavengers. Exiles the Talpa. And then the Bat having a lifelink could also be useful for next turn. And Tumor can attack. Although, if they have an Edict effect, I actually want to keep the Entumor alive. So maybe it's not worth it. Because then they could trade, play like a Liliana and get rid of the Scavengers. So yeah, the main concern would be Anoint with Affliction, or just Removal Spell plus Edict. Another Archfiends should be beatable. Yeah, this is not a good attack, so opponent's gonna hang back. And now we can discard the Sire as well. And we've got a Zombify ready to go. So just attack Exile Sire. Or we can go for the Bat since honestly Lifelink is the most important mode here. And then we keep Zombify for Sire. Which makes sense. Put on double blocks. So I guess we want to put uh, four counter one first. Get to see the new combat mechanics with foundations. So yeah, do I want a bitter reunion? Maybe discard dirge, or I can use dirge to get hexproof, so we don't have to worry about affliction either. So maybe I just stay put. If her opponent was playing red, I would maybe be worried about them gifting the Archfiend so I lose the game. But I don't think we need to worry about that. So yeah, upside last turn of Reunion Discard Dirge is that we maybe find land 5, so I can zombify Sire and immediately give it haste. By keeping Dirge, I have a bit more maybe flexibility over what to put in my graveyard. As her opponent keeps running out Archfiends. Yeah, they don't have a great attack. 
And our opponent says, good game. And they explode. Awesome. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. We've got double scavengers. Brew discarding a Troxa for starters. So yeah, sign me up. Opponent on an aggressive red deck. Looks like the Enchantment variant. Okay, so can brew at instant speed. In this matchup, getting Hexproof might also be important, because they do have Sheltered by Ghosts, potentially. Unless they're on a mono red deck. And then Indestructible is not very helpful when they can still exile my creature. But for now, happy to discard a Truxa. Cut down also an option. Although curving scavengers into Entomer might still be the preferred pick. And I don't have to immediately exile a Truxa in case her opponent has removal next turn. And instead just exile something else just to get the plus one counter. And then if the coast is clear, next turn I can Entomer for Hexproof, for instance. Does seem like they're mono red. So maybe going for Indestructible and Double Strike is good enough. And then eventually Atraxa will give a lifelink. But yeah, it's uh, lots of interesting decisions, what to get, how to sequence. Might lose my opportunity to cut down the Challenger now if they cast the Demonic Ruckus. But we should be able to outrace it if they cannot answer Scavengers. Alright. Valiant Triggers, revealing a Manifold Mouse. Giving Double Strike hits pretty hard as well. So I imagine we'll see that. And the double strike from Manifold Mouse does not contribute towards the Scavengers, it's still a little bit different. Opponent actually had the Lightning Strike. So now I feel justified in not exiling Atraxa right away. So what's our plan now? At least the uh, Manifold Mouse is gone, so don't necessarily need to worry about it. Cut down on Challenger is not gonna work. So I think the plan is just Entomer. Put Zetalpa in the graveyard, and then as soon as I play Scavengers, it's going to be safe, assuming the trigger resolves. The alternative of just playing Scavengers, I guess what we could do, what actually makes sense is cut down Swiss Spear. And then I get to play Scavengers with Haste and Exile Atraxa. Scavengers will have 4 Toughness, so it's unlikely to die to a burn spell. And we'll gain four life as well, which is pretty important. All right, I'm glad we took a second to think about our line. And then next turn, Entomer can get our Zatalpa. At 14, we should be relatively safe, but you never know. A combination of double strike with more pump spells could get us. Opponents get the Coyote. Trigger Valiant finds Heartfire, that's fine. And another one. Okay, so opponent's hitting pretty hard, but uh, no answer to the scavengers. And we should be able to gain a, a lot of life back next turn with Vigilance. Attack. So gain 10 life and have a bunch of life gain on defense. Now, if you have a creature with double strike and lifelink, you may only gain life once if the creature you're blocking dies with first strike damage. So an important interaction to keep in mind. If Coyote were to attack into it, for instance, we don't gain 10, we only gain 5. Although it would not be a great attack. So unless they have some sort of act of treason effect to steal my creature for a turn, we should get there. I guess there used to be some removal spells in Standard that can deal damage and ignore Indestructible. I don't think there's any of those in Standard right now. It's going to be a Burst Lightning taking out the Entomer. So Challenger can attack unopposed, but they're still going to be a bit short. So yeah, it was a fun line to see with the Swiss Spear. That potentially made the difference, because we needed to get Lifelink going as soon as possible. 
And there's definitely the risk of running into a lightning strike dealing three damage if we're not careful. And our opponent explodes. Awesome. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Our hand is functional. We've got the early removal covered. And then dirge number one can set up scavengers, which we'll get with a second dirge at five mana. Not as smooth as just playing one on turn three. But I'll give it a shot. And our opponent on a life gain deck with Case of the Uneaten Feast. And Tumor doesn't seem super needed since we have double dirge. Maybe they play Deep Cavern Bant. We have two answers, so it's not a disaster. And there it is. Nothing I really needed to discard with Bitter Union at the moment. They may as well take the Reunion as the only unique card, unless they maybe have another Bant and are hoping to take both cutdowns before I can cast them. Takes a cutdown. And now Zombify is interesting too. So I think I still plan to cut down the Bants. Not afraid of any instant speed pump spells or other tricks. So I can wait and see, but yeah, I imagine we'll still take out the Bant. Get our cut down back. And then now Dirge can maybe set up Zombify. Getting something like Atraxa. And Zorlin next turn can get back Deep Cavern Bat. So yeah, if we make that play of Dirge gets Atraxa. Next turn our opponent brings back the Bat or casts another one, takes Zombify. And then I'll need to wait another turn on Cutdown first. But that's maybe okay. I'm going for Zatalpa, also an option, just reanimating a 4-8 double strike indestructible with flying can get in the way of the opponent's stuff. Don't really expect anything that could exile it, but Atraxa providing immediate value might still be worth it. Plus if they destroy it, it's still in the graveyard for scavengers, which we're likely to find. So we'll see how this plays out. Still need a fourth land that enters untapped to zombify. But our opponent does indeed get back the bait. And does take the zombify as expected. And we did draw the land. So I don't mind bitter union just to kind of cycle through the deck. Ditching the brew. The haste could also be relevant later. Found the Talpa. Okay, so... Pass with the intention of taking out the Deep Cavern Bat. It's got a finality counter, so it will get exiled. And then we've got a few options going forward. Another Bat was kind of what I was hoping to avoid. Alright, so now what? If I let it resolve, they take Cutdown. So I may as well exile the... First bat, so they have fewer Zorilan triggers. And now they probably take the Zombify. And then I might be on the plan of just Dirge getting Scavengers. Could also be a way of clearing the opponent's graveyard so they can keep looping stuff with Zorilan. But yeah, Scavengers without Indestructibles, not too exciting. Opponent's got more life gain. Could still top deck a uh, cut down and cast a zombify. Or draw scavengers. Interesting. So now what's the plan? If I cast scavengers, exiling Atraxa, we can expect it to get removed before it does much. And don't quite have the mana for a three mana dirge. Plus scavengers could just dirge returning the uh, entomber and then putting another powerful creature in the graveyard, giving us more options. And then next turn maybe set up scavengers with haste from bitter union. So I'll go for a Zatalpa and get back entomber. Which can go for, let's see, maybe Hexproof. Just to cover all our bases. 
So now I want my opponent to tap out so the coast is clear for scavengers to come in with haste. Channeler is going to get big, but it doesn't disrupt us. All right, let's see if we can make a comeback. So yeah, step one is going to be exile probably Zetalpa. And then go for lifelink. Hoping they don't have a cut down in hand, but doesn't seem to be the case. This way, Scavengers actually has Vigilance when it attacks, so it can help play defense for us. And then we need to start gaining a life back as soon as possible. So that only leaves Atraxa. If they had a Deep Cavern backed in Graveyard, we could have exiled that as well to keep Atraxa. But yeah, we're uh, gaining 8 now. So hopefully that's enough. And I'll maybe keep a land in hand. Get Lost is not going to work since it's indestructible. Opponent now reading the scavengers. It is a lot of text to be fair. And now with the map tokens might help us out as well. So now we do have to be a little bit careful, because if I block Channeler with Scavengers, it dies to Death Touch and Double Strike, so they can move the counters to still benefit from it during regular damage. So I think I just avoid that situation by blocking Zoralin. Going for Deep Cavern Bats to get Zombify back. Doesn't seem super needed, happy to give Scavengers Hexproof. And then eat uh, Sanctifier, take 11, and gain 4 as well. Definitely possible they have another Zorlin in hand. And get to untap. And let's go exploring. Another Scavengers I'm happy to keep on top, also just to get an extra plus one counter. Send in Scavengers, and then... Could think about exiling the opponent's stuff, but going for Hexproof still seems a little bit safer. On the off chance that they have Anoint with Affliction, which could still exile my 3-drop. Opponent takes it. Falls to 6. And then now I can certainly consider blocking the Channeler. And our opponent scoops it up. Awesome. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play with a promising hand. Can discard Sphinx and then have Hexproof on Scavengers right away. For now, I don't mind surveilling. Maybe hit some more keywords. Zombify could be an okay backup plan in case Scavengers gets removed instantly. So yeah, I would love for the opponent to tap out, so we don't have to worry about removal on scavengers in response to the trigger. Duress. Alright, that's fine. So they can take the zombify, but scavengers will resolve and have hexproof. And then there's not too many answers our opponent can have. An edict effect like Liliana would still be effective, so that's something we definitely need to avoid. And then with Lively Dirge, we can eventually give Scavengers Indestructible and Double Strike. Opponent actually took the Dirge. So, that's interesting. We drew another copy as well. I guess I could still have a cutdown in hand if I play Scavengers here. So, yeah, close call. Could go for Dirge for 3 mana. And then, basically plan to put Zetalpa in the graveyard and then maybe zombify it back and just skip the scavengers altogether. Could also go for Atraxa for card advantage. Yeah, the main concern here is cut down. If it weren't for cut down, I would just slam down scavengers. If they cut down scavengers in an attempt to target Sphinx, it still gets exiled, so that's gone. 
but then at least scavengers would still be in the graveyard for a dirge later. So maybe that's still okay. All right, that resolved. So cut down was not in their hands, but now we have to worry about edict effects and maybe sweepers eventually. Authority, that's fine. Okay, so what's next? Dirge, go for Zatalpa. As additional insurance on the off chance that they have a Wrath of God, for instance. And then Lifelink is probably the next keyword we're interested in. So at 5 mana, there's still the potential of a Sunfall exiling the Scavengers. Opponent with Enduring Tenacity, so they might be playing the 2-card combo with a new 5-drop. And in the meantime, if I use Brew, giving this 2 extra power, that would be lethal, so yeah, let's go for it. Back with Scavengers. And give the tapped fish. And that's 14 damage. Awesome. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. We've got a little bit of removal with cutdown early. And then Dirge we would need to cast for 5 mana to eventually access the Scavengers. Yeah, this sounds not great. Take a mulligan. This is a bit better. We get to Surveil early to look for Scavengers. Brew discards a Talpa, cut down in the meantime. But one card needs to go. Yeah, still kinda wanna keep Dirge since it is eventually a Scavengers, but I guess we'll get to see quite a few cards with Double Surveil and Brew. That I either draw into a scavengers or find another dirge in the meantime. Opponent on the red aggro. And there's a dirge. So I think it's fine to play a tap land for now. Zombify could be a backup plan to reanimate Zatalpa. Although it's a pretty slow one. And I also need to get to four mana. Yeah, I think scavengers is still probably our best bet. But a close call there since... Yeah, turn four is a Talpa, could still be decent in some circumstances. Opponent's got the Manifold Mouse, so they're off to a great start. Unclear what to cut down, whether it's Heartfire or Manifold. Because a Heartfire plus Pump Spells and Cell Sword can represent a lot more damage. Let's see what's on top. Another cut down. Alright, with that information, I think we cut down Heartfire Hero now before they can grow it. And then we know we have an answer to the Manifold Mouse next turn. And that is probably Bitter Union discards a Talpa. Still getting hit pretty hard. And if they have a land, that's going to be incredibly painful, but they don't. So, start with a Bitter Union. And then Violent Tumor can maybe get lifelink for us. Do I cut down Manifold Mouse now? Do we wait? If I wait, I basically let them trigger Valiant for free. And we might run into some awkwardness if they have a pump spell. So I think I just take out Manifold Mouse now. But we could easily be dead. Turn inside out is plus four damage. And a Monster's Rage, so even had I kept up, cut down, they could have responded with another pump spell, and we die regardless. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Missing Scavengers, but we do have Zatalpa, which we can discard in a multitude of ways, and then maybe Zombified back, and eventually Dirge can access Scavengers as well. So I think there's enough going for it. Just hitting our land drops would be fine. 
facing a green deck with elves, and we drew scavengers. Okay, so if we can find land three. Scavengers is looking good. Definitely need to take out Archdruid, since that's an incredibly scary card otherwise. And we're happy to discard the Talpa. So if we draw an untapped land, it's Scavengers. If not, maybe play the Brew, and then we could Zombify the Talpa instead. Opponent playing a bit of black as well. And lots of one drops. And another tap land to draw. So we can brew, maybe discarding a tapped vents. Find a cut down. Okay. So we could cast a cut down now, but there's no real reason to. Just play a tap theater. And then another dirge doesn't seem needed. Can already use one to give scavenger additional keywords now the black mana could be for removal but for now just an imperious perfect which i'll cut down and another zatalpa so yeah, just bringing back zatalpa with zombify is reasonable although we are staring down a lot of damage still if our opponents were to go all out especially if they draw another lord so what I'm considering is just cut down Imperius Perfect and then play Scavengers exiling Zetalpa. Next turn Dirge can give it a lifelink as well, and then we should be able to outrace them. So not expecting anything in the elf deck that can take out the Scavengers now. So they can still activate Fountain Port. Could also Dirge to set up Zombify. We don't have to necessarily exile a lifelinker with Scavengers. But it does seem fun. And it's probably going to be good enough here. And let's go for Sire. Already have Vigilance, so that's great. And now we're hitting for 8 and gaining 8. Our opponent makes a token. So they potentially have two more turns. Since we're hitting for 10 next turn. But yeah, opponent scoops it up. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. We've got a hand that can discard the Talpa and then maybe Zombify to reanimate it. So just need to hit our land drops. Put on blue black. Find Sire, which I also don't mind discarding. And then we can play a tabbed Vents. Opponent with Overlord, so they might also be on the reanimation plan. Atroxa, so... Not sure if they're maybe a Sultai deck with Squirming Emergence or just uh, Blue-Black. Either way, we're gonna bid a reunion again. One's got a scholar, another discard outlet. So yeah, I can imagine them bringing back Atraxa next turn. Cut down, not really needed. All right, we'll try the Talpa, which can attack into an Atraxa for what it's worth. Sire would also be reasonable, just because it lines up favorably against Atraxa, but they can probably take it out a lot more easily. I guess there's also Jace to worry about shrinking down my Zetalpa. But uh, for now it's fine. And then the Brew can also pump it up. 
Conan's got a Volgavoth in there too. And yep, yeah, Zombify. Volgavoth getting to exile stuff is potentially a problem. So what's my plan? I can attack since we have Vigilance, and then if they block, we can brew. And if not, we'll uh, just keep it going, I guess. Put on blocks. So I'm probably just gonna go for a cut down. Find scavengers can be very relevant graveyard hates for the opponent's deck as well. And then I suppose we could cut down Scholar now. Okay, so good scavengers coming up with haste. So we can potentially exile Sire and Atraxa or Volgavoth. Opponent runs out Jace. Shrinks down the Talpa. So it doesn't hit nearly as hard now as a one power double striker. And cut down the draw. So yeah, we get to play Scavengers, pay one mana to give it haste, exiling both Atraxa and Volgavoth. And that also means we get to fly over the fish token so we can finish off Jace. And that will unlock the Talpa to once again deal 8 damage as opposed to 2. Now they can, of course, remove the scavengers. It's not indestructible right now. And yep, opponent even with annoyance, so would have been able to exile scavengers through indestructible. So good to keep in mind for future scavengers, and yeah, our opponent explodes, the Talpa too good, and we also cleaned out their graveyard. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, missing scavengers. Although we might just be on the zombify plan instead, so that could still work out. Maybe missing some cheaper interaction. And then reunion discard sire. Opponent on mono red aggro. All right, so stick to the plan. Lively dirge also a way to eventually get to scavengers, although it will cost us five mana basically. And our opponent's curving out. Cut down was a useful draw. Probably need to take out challenger main phase to avoid any prowess shenanigans. And then also want to make sure I hit land drop number four for zombify. So, and Tumor can go. Alright, and uh, got rewarded for not playing my land yet. So yeah, next turn Zombify. Not sure how Monorad deals with a Sire of Seven Deaths. But we're about to find out. And then we still have Dirge as kind of the backup plan here. Eventually accessing the scavengers. Yeah, I'm blocking. It's got first strike. And our opponent realizes their mistake. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Missing scavengers as well as some powerful creatures. Although, we've got discard outlets ready to set those up, plus we get to surveil, so I'll give it a try. With better triumph we've got some additional interaction as well. And we can cast a reunion if we find a big creature, I'll still have a second discard outlet, so we can still set up a turn for Zombify. Put on blue-white Auras with Scavenger. Yeah, the Scavenger is quite scary. Cliffs can go. And the main concern in this matchup is sheltered by ghosts getting around indestructible as well. Yeah. 
So I think I still have to bit reunion first. Alright, found our sire, which we can try to discard and then reanimate. Unlikely to necessarily win the game by itself, but it's a start. Opponent is going to shelter right now. Okay. So we won't be able to take out the Hall Creeper until we get to 4 mana. Possible they have more shelters in hand, or maybe the other hexproof trick. So, yeah, interesting spot. Now we've got Sphinx as an option, but even though it's got hexproof and would be safe from another shelter, it's not gonna win the race against a 6 power unblockable lifelinker. So I've got two approaches, either Bitter Triumph Scavenger now, so we don't run into Hexproof, and then next turn hope that Zombify on the uh, Sire is good enough. Although I'm going to be taking at least six in the meantime. So I'll be at eight, so then even an Ethereal Armor on Hall Creeper's lethal. So I think the play might actually be just Theater, and then... So Talpa's not a bad one to mill. And then just hope that our opponent does not have a protection spell and that bitter triumph on Hall Creeper gets me back in the game. But yeah, opponent does have ethereal armor, so had I gone for the line of discard sire and then reanimate it, they would have presented lethal with their unblockable threat. Now we could still die right now. Another ethereal armor, yeah. So that's counting four enchantments. So even if I better triumph the scavenger, that's not going to make a difference. And now we're definitely just dead. All right, so not much we could have done, sadly. And good game. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play with a promising hand. Turn two, Reunion, discard Sphinx. Turn three, Scavengers with Hexproof, as long as our opponent doesn't respond to the trigger. And then Entumor can maybe get some of our other keywords in the graveyard for Scavengers. Facing turn one planes. So now the main concern would be a Sunfall on five, eventually wiping my board, at which point Hexproof doesn't really matter. And a Builder's Talent, so opponents also maybe trying to get something back out of the graveyard, which Scavengers can also exile, so that's kind of nice. But yeah, we'll run it out now, while the coast is clear. So with Hexproof, it's mostly Sweepers that exile, like Sunfall, that concern me, because we can also make it indestructible now. Opponent is keeping the Great Door available, so they can discard end of turn and then set up the Builder's Talent on the following turn, perhaps. But I'll put Zetalpa in the graveyard. And then now Scavengers is indestructible, should our opponent have a Wrath of God, which is now legal and standard as well. So there's not much that can answer it, other than Sweepers at Exile, or maybe some sort of Edict effect. But you don't see those in Mono White. So hopefully we can deal 12 damage before Sunfall happens. We also have Bitter Union to give creatures haste, so we can maybe follow up a Sunfall with a hasty Scavengers. Alright, Beza can now gain the opponent some life back, so they're back up to 16. So yes, Sunfall is still a problem, but uh, yeah, there's not a whole lot I can do about it. I can better triumph Beza, so Entumor can also attack. May or may not be worth it. Can better reunion first. And more lanes. And more lanes can go. Yeah, I guess we'll put the pedal to the metal here. Can just pay three life. Opponent takes it, so implies that there's no Sunfall happening, otherwise they might have jumped the Entumor, or they want their token to be bigger. 
Uh, they could also discard an Omniscience here and bring it back with Talent, but looks like they don't have it. And our opponent explodes. Awesome. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. Our hand seems functional. If we can find a discard outlet, turn two to put a truck sign the graveyard for scavengers, that would help. Especially against the burn deck. Alright, and we got there. Now, of course, a 3 3 they can still take out. So, finding us a Talpa for indestructible, also important. So, it's possible we might want to entumor the Talpa before deploying the scavengers. But on the flip side, instant speed removal on scavengers can still take it out. So, best case scenario, our opponent just taps out. Shock already could be an answer to a 2 2 scavengers in response to the trigger. So, don't mind seeing that here. And now a thrill of possibility. Slagstorm also an answer to a 3 3. So, yeah, I think I'm going for the Talpa first before we deploy scavengers. Alright, there it is. So, can discard that now. And then Surveil is probably more relevant. And another scavengers, I think I'll keep in case they remove the first one. And then we have life gain thanks to Atraxa, so yeah, if the scavengers can stick the landing here, we should be in business, especially with Reunion giving haste. So if this one resolves and successfully exiles the Talpa, that would be great. The problem with them removing scavengers is that the Talpa is still going to be exiled. But no, opponent lets it go, so now we can play an untapped land, give haste, and exile Atraxa as well. So now we're gaining 8 life, and yeah, we should be well in the clear. So had they just pointed Flame Lash at the scavengers, this game might have looked a bit different. Invasion can deal 4 more. Alright, so we got to see our red-black scavengers deck in action. And yeah, it's not quite clear whether this is just a downgrade over a classic reanimator deck that focuses more on the 4-mana reanimation plan, but it is pretty novel, and if your opponents aren't necessarily expecting scavengers that can catch them off guard, being able to make a 3-mana creature that already has indestructible and double strike can be quite valuable, and then eventually giving it lifelink is a great way to beat all the aggressive decks in the format. So the deck definitely has potential, although I wouldn't necessarily expect it to stick around as a very competitive deck for long since it's pretty easy to hate out or just make sure the opponent keeps up removal for the scavenger trigger so it never becomes indestructible in the first place so yeah that's going to do it for today's gameplay want to thank you for watching hope you enjoyed and as always have a nice day